Remember that I said in the basic communication model that in order to convey information to somebody, you have to impose a pattern which interacts with a medium in a channel, which gets decoded at the recipient's end and is finally received in a form in which the recipient can understand it. A lot of these interactions between the patterns and the medium of the channel are best described by waves. When you speak, you're using pressure waves in order to convey information to somebody else. These pressure waves represent points at which molecules of air are packed closer together and points at which they're further apart. So energy is pumped into the atmosphere to compress molecules together. The high point of the energy, which squashes the molecules closer together, is the crest of the wave. The low point of the energy, when the molecules are far apart, is the trough of the wave. If we were to count the number of waves passing by us in a single second, that would give us a frequency, because frequency is just number of waves per second. Imagine you were videoing the ripples on a pond after you threw a stone into it, and you picked some point and you counted all the little ripples that passed through that point. That's a frequency per second. So we identify frequency as number of waves per second, or cycles per second, or to use the modern term, hertz. Waves also have a length to them. That is the length between the same position on two waves. In radio, wavelengths can be very long. A single wave can be the size of a human being. There are also much shorter wavelengths, too. And that brings us to the electromagnetic spectrum of which radio communications makes use of. This stretches from gamma rays down to the lowest form of radio waves. And in between are the parts of the optical spectrum that we used to see. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple are all just parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, the optical part. There are the parts that we used in order to x-ray during medical examinations. There are parts that are used to irradiate foods to keep molds from growing, gamma rays. And there are the parts that we use to communicate with in the radio spectrum. We're not the only users of the different parts of the radio spectrum. Bees use ultraviolet. Moths use infrared. In the radio part of the spectrum, we are probably the only users. And of human usage of the radio spectrum, the biggest users are the military. They use the longest wavelength radio in order to allow submarines to communicate with each other. And the upper parts of the spectrum can penetrate buildings and communicate with people inside. So the electromagnetic spectrum covers an awful lot. Understanding the different strengths and weaknesses of the wavelength or frequencies that we make use of is vital to understanding how radio communications has become so successful.